Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky, and you're listening to Live Without Limits on the Blog Talk Radio Network. Today's show is titled, How Can Financial Advisors Help Your Small Business? This is an important topic to talk about because it doesn't matter what business you're in, you need to plan for the financial future. In fact, I can tell you that from experience that my father, having been a lawyer and understood the importance of planning for the future, is why I today and my sisters today are set financially. And I have a friend that her parents owned a business. And when the father talked to the mother about making investments, the mother didn't want to do so. And then By the time the mother passed away a year ago, she had gone through all her assets and had nothing to leave to her daughter. So this is why it's a very important topic and something you need to consider whenever you have any type of business or even if you work for a corporation because you never know what the future will hold. In fact, the The COVID-19 pandemic is a good example of how people actually lost income for the last year. And if they had had some financial planning in place or been able to set aside money, they wouldn't be in as bad a shape today as they are. So small business owners shy away from hiring a financial advisor, thinking of it as an added cost. However, the truth is that choosing a financial advisor is not only saves you time and money, but it also relieves you from financial worries that come with handling a thriving business. Now, I remember back in the 80s when A.L. Williams got established, and that's term insurance. The thing about term insurance is it's a way to create and set up investments for yourself for for the future. And then eventually it all was bought out and, and the name changed to Prime America and it's built as a distributorship where people own their own business and they're not just selling you insurance, but they're also selling you financial advice. And I actually ran into someone quite a few years ago that I knew in high school that he he was a career military. And then when he got out of the military, he actually joined a company called Enterprise, which sits down with clients and helps them plan their financial future. So there are opportunities out there if you understand how to do this and do it correctly. According to research, 20% of small businesses fail in their first year, and they each have one thing in common, lack of proper planning. That's where your business plan comes in because that helps you set up your plan in place to begin with. While business owners may deem themselves as a jack or jill of all trades, finance is something that not many are experts in, leading to low savings, inability to manage day-to-day cash flow properly, and lack of retirement plan. Now, I'm also going to tell you a story that being someone with a disability, I didn't always have the same opportunities as everyone else. Therefore, I had to create my own opportunities. And in doing so, 
getting into what I do professionally, that at the time, the way it was all set up is I needed overhead just to be able to create videos to be to send out as media kits if I was going to promote myself to speakers to an association. Then, too, getting on with seminar companies where I would travel around and work 10, 15 days a week and be off for two weeks. Well, here's the thing. Because cerebral palsy affects how you make eye contact, and it was so important in the speaking business that you be able to make eye contact that I couldn't always get on. Plus, for me, what gets into what goes into short-term memory doesn't always go into long-term memory. And if my thought processes move faster than how I'm speaking, then it creates a problem in how I'm presenting. So that was another issue. But it didn't deter me from wanting to do what I do. And no matter how many times I would go in other directions just to take care of myself financially, I always came back to, to my original goal of what I planned to do. What changed for me was the fact that the Internet allowed me to make it an equal playing field and be able to do what I wanted to do nearly 40 years ago today and be very successful at it. The thing is, it's, you know, people want to keep selling me these these high training programs for large prices. Well, if I still had 30, 40 years left in my career, they would be a good investment. But for me being at the end of my career, they're not worth it. So you have to realize and plan for those things because you never know. The thing is that about 15 years ago, about the same time that I started actually doing podcasting before it even was termed the podcast because you had Blog Talk Radio, you had Talk Show, you had a few others. Blog Talk Radio just happens to be the only one that seems to have lasted all these years. But you have a lot of media companies that have popped up that sell people on starting podcasts that they want to charge them $3,500 for a six-month contract just to, for a producer to work with them. And then they, they, get, they talk about how they're going to sell advertising for your show and you can make a percentage off of it. Well, I found out after the fact that the advertising they were selling was other people's ads who already had podcasts on the show. Because what happened was when my contract was up, they wanted to renew the contract for $1,000 less and then tell me how they would put an ad for my show on other podcasts. So recognizing that and, and realizing that you don't need these media companies to create a podcast for you. You can have, go, and, and there's so many audio programs like Audacity, Audition, that you can use and create your own and then just upload them to a site like Spreaker or iTunes or Spotify, and you don't have to have a exclusive contract with them because they're a, a membership site that when people join and upgrade to a membership, and, and that's where your ads come from, and that's where you make your money on these platforms. A plan for failure, uh, excuse me, a plan for future growth. As a business owner, you may have lots of plans for your business, for its future success. You must have planned out various long-term goals. However, many of these goals are often unrealistic and hard to attain. A financial advisor looks at your business plan from a third-party perspective and ensures that you have a clear vision of the road ahead. He can also evaluate your company's performance on a daily basis and align it with diff 
different performance indicators like market conditions, changing competition, and technological advances to predict the likelihood that your business is heading in the right direction. With this information, you will know whether your planning is paying off or a change of strategy is required. Another thing to think about is you also need to look at things like creating multiple streams of income because what works one day may not work tomorrow, but if you have other sources of income, then it helps create that steady income that you truly need. Saving time and energy. Small business owners wear lots of hats. If you're an entrepreneur, you may find yourself juggling between different departments within your company. One minute, you're, you're researching a new product to bring to market. And the next, you're handling a customer service issue. With so much on your plate, not everything gets your full attention. And in the end, your financial planning suffers the most with poor bookkeeping, unsound financial decisions, and cash flow discrepancies. This is why delegating your business finances to a professional comes in handy. While you're busy handling the operations of your business, your financial advisors will keep a check on the capital and ensure that it is properly maintained. Here's another thing to think about. If you're a solopreneur working from home, often, if the best thing you can do is, and I remember taking the course that was, oh, the secret of building your, I forget the exact title, but it was what it was saying was it was teaching you how to delegate and not wear all the hats. That look at what it is that where your strengths are, the things that you truly love to do, and then once you've done that, you're, what you need to do is this: delegate. There's other other solopreneurs that can be virtual assistants and help you with your marketing and other things, and all of that can be that's actually planned into your budget and how you're going to pay. Now, the thing is that when you have a business on the internet, you, your cost is far less than it would be if you had a brick and mortar store. <laughs> With a brick and mortar store, you tr you have to have at least anywhere from a quarter million to half a million dollars in the bank just to cover expenses. Because for one thing, it's not just renting the space; it's putting on the lights, it's getting your phone service, it's buy it's buying your merchandise, and it's training your staff. And that all costs money even before you open your doors for customers. Saving money. Business owners who neglect the financial condition of their business often fail to notice where they're overspending. In this case, a financial advisor will evaluate your business finances and keep you informed regarding unnecessary costs. Once you identify needless expenses, you can take corrective action as soon as possible and ensure your spending is within budget. Evaluating market trends. Financial service providers are equipped with some of the best tools, enabling them to research the market trends more effectively. Moreover, some markets are more competitive than others, and having an expert opinion helps analyze how your business fares in these markets more proactively. They will also use research to provide you with solutions 
to any of the problems that you're facing in the business world. For example, if your business is out of cash, your financial advisor can better facilitate you to the type of loan that you should be opting for. They can also offer you tax advice and help you out with any tax problems that you're facing. Retirement planning. Many business owners are wrapped up in the logic that they later sell their business and fund their retirement. While there is nothing wrong with giving all of the business you have in, my, in hand, it is not a wise practice. When it comes to investment, it is smarter to have investment portfolios that are diversified. This is where I think people fail because they don't understand the stock market and they don't understand like, where to put money in dividends. You've got corporations that, that allow you to have the 401 to set. Well, there's also programs if you're an entrepreneur that that you can set up. I don't remember which which one that is because I haven't looked at it recently, but there are some. All you have to do, even your bank where you you have your 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 business accounts, whether it's checking or savings, they can be your financial advisor and they can help you with setting up some of these programs. And also look at look at government certain government bonds because they can be good investments. And look at how now in fact I can tell you this that back my father passed away over 50 years ago, and I don't know how many years before that, but he had bought 50 shares of Coke stock, and that happens to be a blue chip shop stock that splits when it reaches up to a certain amount that today we have, we have over 7,000 shares, and that's part of what supports three different households. The thing is, you have to understand and plan for those things. You never know, and you have to look for different types of stock that you can invest in because you, you know you have a certain amount of money you can play with. You have a certain amount of money that you have to make investments. Keep to that ratio and plan for those futures because you never know when you need them. A financial advisor can help you choose which investment plan works for us best for your unique situation, including when and how you want to retire. As your business starts generating more revenue, the financial advisor can help you decide how to invest the capital and continue to grow your business further. Succession planning. Besides planning your retirement, you should also plan out what will happen to your business or who will help the company running when you are no longer in charge for any reason. Known as a succession plan, the small business advisor will help you draft out a document with clear instructions on how to keep the business running or prepare for, for sale in your absence. Always, and I'm going to tell you a little story that many, many years ago, my uncle, or, or rather, my father's twin sister and their brother went into business with her husband, man, uh, owning a shoe manufacturing company. And they actually lived in Columbia, South Carolina, or near the military base. So they manufactured certain shoes for the military right there, and then certain sneakers and things. But the problem was they did not plan for the future and prepare their son to take over the business. And therefore, when my uncle passed away suddenly and my cousin was forced to take over the business. 
He had no idea to run the business, and he basically caused the business to go, the company to go out of business. So when you are planning for retirement or you are planning for, for what if something happens to you, then you need to know exactly how and what will happen if you're incapacitated or can't work anymore and how that business will drive in the future. So, known as a succession plan, the Small Business Advisor will help you draft out a document with clear instructions on how to keep the business running or prepare for sale in your absence, keeping personal finances in line. Most people start a business to improve their financial position. In fact, making more money is the best net motive for any business. However, many business owners become so engrossed in running their business that they neglect their personal finances and end up overspending. A professional and experienced financial advisor will keep a check on all your spending and coordinating all aspects to ensure that your business and you stay in the right financial track. You know, right now I happen to be living in a condo community and our building has its own condo association. And when I first moved in here, the president at the time had a company that he hired to manage it. And then when he got to the point that he couldn't run the business anymore, a lot of things came out because not only was he the president, but his wife was the treasurer, and they brought on someone else to be the vice president who just basically went along with whatever they said and did. And that when they finally moved out, it was found out that they were basically absconding with money. And so you need, you, need to, you need to be prepared for those things. What happens if, that, if those things occur? Or what if you, if, if you need to have expenses that come up that were unexpected? You have to plan for those. You have to have the funds in order to run that business. Do you need a smart business advisor? Well, it is not mandatory to hire a small financial advisor. It is highly recommended that you dedicate it, one, for your organization. With the help of a financial advisor, you can keep a check on all your finances and ensure that you are right on track when it comes to managing your financial position. This is where we often need to plan on what you are going to do if something happens in the future, because you never know. And you can have unexpected finances. You know, I can remember back many years ago, people would say that when they retire, they want to go travel. They want to do the things that they don't didn't get the chance to do when they were young. Well, what happens? Then they, they get older, they start having health problems, they slow down, they can't do those things that they really wanted to do. So if you plan in to your budget, all the things that you wanted, and take the time off, take the vacation. This is why it's always good to have an accountant as your financial planner, because they can keep a check on what's going on with your business and help you plan for that future, for those things that will help you build that business. Remember, we were talking about retirement planning, the succession planning, and those are the things that, that where a lot of people fail to plan. You just, you never know what's going to happen with your health. You never know when something's going to happen like a, a pandemic. In fact, if you look back 
in, in at 1918 when they had the Spanish flu and so many people died from that and they didn't know what they what they know today and today one of the reasons we had such a high death rate was because you had people who just didn't want to do the things that they should have done in order to prepare and you never know where you're going and and even though now we have a vaccine for it it's still taking time for people to be vaccinated and keeping social distancing is the best way to do it and if you know that you have neighbors that are not practicing the things that they should do but you are then you need to stay as far away from them as possible because planning especially today and what this pandemic has shown us is that we have run into a new paradigm on how business is being done today and how it will be done in the future and the thing is if you look back at the very beginning of the 21st century we were already moving in that direction because companies were already hiring people to work from home because they were looking for ways to cut the overhead and expenses on spending and by having someone work from home and giving them the computer giving them the software installed having them set up the internet service and phone service and being able to connect into the the online company website then all they were able to do was to refer and transfer calls into to you and this just really allowed more flexibility it also gave people who work from home tax breaks because if you're using your electricity if you're using your phone for business if you are using your car for business keep good records and these can be taken off as tax breaks so always always be aware that you have the ability to control how well you live in the future based on the financial planning that you are doing today and don't shy away from it make it a part of how you plan for your business and how you look for opportunities to grow a business because you may start out with one product today then six months from now you want to add another product and then down the road or find a way that you can actually multi-purpose a product on different platforms in order to create multiple streams of income or if you have a product that you're selling then why not add some type of service to it what if you take and create that product but then you want to create an e-learning course to help people understand how to utilize that product and how they can incorporate it into other aspects or create a webinar or create create a coaching session it's just what you need to do is plan plan for those times when you have the ability to build up and expand and you know when you're working with a financial advisor they can sit down with you they can help you plan out those finances in order to be successful now remember you can go to my website and that website is the number one personalcareercoach.com and you can or you can go to my website askdavidashinsky.com and I have a number of e-learning courses that you can take that can help you with starting an online business and growing it into a six or seven figure income 